Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the Master. Thank you for joining me again as we continue our theme for the week, and that is overcoming spiritual blindness, opening the eyes of faith. And today, we want to talk about um, how when your when your when your vision is right when you no longer are encumbered by spiritual blindness, how it moves you from a life of stagnation. You ever felt like you're stuck in a rut? Well, there's a man in the Bible named Bartimaeus who's blind. And the tragedy is not that he's blind because there's a lot of blind people who have lived very productive lives. Uh, you can think of Ray Charles or Stevie Wonder they were blind, but they were not stuck. They were productive. The problem with this man named Bartimaeus, we find in the Gospel of Mark chapter 10, is that he's stagnant. I want you to look at his story in Mark chapter 10, verse 46 and 52, through 52. It says, they spent some time in Jericho. As Jesus was leaving town, trailed by his disciples and a parade of people, a blind beggar by the name of Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus. Notice, first of all, just look at that. Bartimaeus, Timaeus. Bartimaeus, Timaeus. Of course, uh, bar is the Hebrew word for son. So, son of Timaeus. They sound alike, Timaeus, right? Bartimaeus, Timaeus. And the idea is that Timaeus, who is Bartimaeus' father, was blind also. So this is some type of congenial um, uh, blindness that uh, is part of the lineage of Bartimaeus. It's been passed down to Bartimaeus from his father, uh, Timaeus. It goes on to say he's sitting along the roadside. Don't forget that. He's stagnant because he's sitting. When he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by, he began to cry out, Son of David, Jesus, mercy, have mercy on me. Many tried to hush him, but he yelled all the louder, Son of David, mercy, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped in his tracks, call him over. They called him. It's your lucky day. Get up. He's calling you to come. Throwing off his coat, he was on his feet at once and Jesus and came to Jesus. Jesus said, what can I do for you? The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. On your way, Jesus said, your faith has saved and healed you. In that very instant, he recovered his sight and followed Jesus down the road. I want you to notice in this story that the word road is used twice. Look at verse 46. Verse 46 says, they spent some time in Jericho. As Jesus was leaving town, trailed by his disciples and a parade of people, a blind beggar by the name of Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, was sitting along the road. So life was passing Bartimaeus by in verse 46. He's stagnant. Everyone is moving in the parade, and he's sitting on the roadside. And many people are in verse 46 in their own life. Life is passing them by. You feel a sense of stagnation, stagnation in your, on your job, stagnation with your career, stagnation in your relational life, stagnation in your own growth. You're sitting on the road. But as I said, the word road appears twice. It appears in verse 46, but look at verse 52. It appears again. It says, on your way. Now he's on his way. Said Jesus, your faith has saved and healed you. In that very instance, he recovered his sight and followed Jesus down the road. So in one verse, he's sitting beside the road as other people are passing by. And in the final verse, in verse 52, he's actually moving on the road. 
So he's gone from sitting to moving, from being a stagnant, stuck person to being unstuck and progressive. And the goal is to be progressive. Now, if Jesus had not passed that way, Brother Barnabas would still be sitting by that roadside. Jesus is the one that makes a difference. The question is, what was it that moved Barnabas from sitting on the road to actually getting moving on the road? Because when it comes to, to being unstuck and overcoming spiritual blindness and getting our life moving again, there are some things that Bartimaeus did and discovered that we must do if we're going to get unstuck. If we're going to say, you know, I'm no longer sitting on the roadside. I'm on the road. I'm on my way somewhere. Well, the, there are several things I want to point out in this story that I think are very practical and applicable for all of us. Number one, Barnabas believed even though he couldn't see it. Barnabas was blind, but he believed what he could not see, namely that Jesus was there. He didn't see Jesus, but he was told that Jesus was passing by and he knew that Jesus was out there and he believed that if he made enough ruckus that he could get Jesus's attention. Now, he would not have tried if he didn't believe. And one of the signs that you believe is that you're trying. And had he just remained silent, amen, he would have been stuck on that road. One of the first steps towards moving from a stagnant place is to believe that you can move from that stagnant place. And he believed. He didn't see Jesus because he's blind, but he believed even though he didn't see it. And I hope you can believe even though you don't see always the evidence that things are going to get better. You just keep on believing. Amen. Amen. Secondly, I want you to notice something else. Bartimaeus used what he had. He used what he had. For example, he could not see. And so uh, he could have said, well, since I can't see, I won't even try. And But notice what he did use. In order to get Jesus' attention, what are some of the things that he, he used? Or put it another way, in order for him to get moving and, and to regain his sight, what did Barnabas use? That he, he used, first of all, his ears. He heard Jesus was passing by. He heard. So he, he did have ears. And then he used something else. He used his voice. He cried out to Jesus and said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And then when Jesus called him, he used his feet. And you wonder, well, how could he get to Jesus? And he couldn't see because he used his feet and he used his ears. And Jesus kept on saying, come on, Barnabas, come on, Barnabas. And so he used his ears. The point I'm making is instead of focusing in on what you don't have, take an inventory of your life and discover what you do have. You probably have more than you realize and use what you have. Here's the third thing that got him moving on the road. He ignored the haters. He ignored the haters. Look at verse 48. Verse 48 uh, says this. Many tried to hush him up but he yelled all the louder. They tried to hush him up. In other words, he didn't have anyone to encourage him. And when you're trying to get unstuck and get your blessing and move on the road, going somewhere, don't expect to always have cheerleaders. That's all right. Ignore your haters. Amen. He, uh, he, no one encouraged him. They just said, be quiet. You're not important enough. Um, but he kept on yelling anyway. And those same folk who said, uh, shut up, when Jesus stopped, are the same ones who said, lucky man, uh, this is your day. Look at verse 48 and 49. Verse 48 says again, many tried to hush him up, but yet he yelled all the loudest, which means he ignored his haters. Some of the David, son of David, mercy, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped in his tracks. He got his blessings because he ignored the haters. You're going to have to ignore some haters. And it says, call him over. Those same folk who said, shut up, are the same folk who came around and said, it's your lucky day. Get up. He's calling for you. 
See how fickle people are? People are fickle. That's why you can't put ultimate stock in what people say. Amen. You can't put stock in what people say. And this was his chance. Because listen, had he not called on Jesus, he would have missed his opportunity to be healed. Because Jesus was going from here, Jericho, to Jerusalem, where Jesus would be executed, crucified. He would not come back this way. Brothers and sisters, please know that opportunities come, chances happen, and sometimes if you don't seize those chances, when you have those chances, they will pass never to return again. Seize the day. Carpe diem. Seize the day. And it was his lucky day, it says in the text, because he sees the day and Jesus healed him. And another thing that you have to remember, the fourth thing I want you to see how he got moving. First of all, he believed even when he didn't see it, he used what he had. He didn't have eyes, but he had ears. He had a mouth. He had legs. He ignored his haters. Ignore your haters. They're fickle. And then finally, he made no provisions for the relapse. He believed that once God healed him, that he's not going back to the state he used to be. And that's what you have to believe. What does it say that he made no provisions for the relapse? Verse 50 says this. Verse 50 says, throwing off his coat. No, that's just not any coat. In that coat were his pockets, and in his pockets were all of the chains and maybe some food or whatever he had that sustained him while he was a beggar. It says he threw off his coat. Why do you think he threw off his coat? He threw off his coat because he believed by faith he was not going to need it anymore. He made no provisions for relapse. He's moving in a different direction. Make no provisions for relapse. Once God has blessed you and once by faith you're accepting the promises of God, get up saying, I am not going back to what I used to. I am moving forward. And the Bible says that he followed Jesus along the way. Now, are you Bartimaeus? Are you Bartimaeus? Are you stuck? Uh, do you want to get unstuck so you're not sitting on the road, but you're on your way? on the road, moving in the direction that God would have you to move. Please remember the principles. Believe it when you don't see it. Keep on believing it. Just because, that's what we're talking about, spiritual blindness. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there for you. Jesus was there for him, even though he didn't see it. And you have to believe that Jesus is there for you. Use what you have. Take an inventory of what you have. Quit focusing on the people who are not supporting you. Quit focusing on what little you do have and use what you have. Take inventory. Don't expect everyone to encourage you. You will have some haters. It's interesting. I know someone um, who, when they were had a serious overweight problem, no one said anything to them. But when they started working out and losing weight, then people started coming up to them and said, saying to them, it's not healthy to lose all that weight so quickly. Now, they weren't concerned about them when they were overweight. It's only when they started getting better that they registered the, some concerns, and it was superficial concerns. Sometimes you have to ignore your haters. In fact, one of the signs maybe that you are improving is that that's when all the haters come out. But don't let them discourage you. Keep on calling for Jesus. Amen. Let God prepare a table before you, a table of blessings in the presence of your enemies. And then he threw off his coat and made no provisions for relapse, and he's on his way on the road, going somewhere. And if you do what Bartimaeus did, so will you. Amen. God bless you. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today. And if we're stuck, help us to get on the road right now, moving somewhere. Help us to apply these four principles to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so very much for being with me again for another powerful point to ponder. If you don't have a church home, we'd love to invite you to become a part of St. Stephen Baptist Church. Contact us here at St. Stephen, new start at ssclive.org. We will get back with you. Have a blessed day the rest of the day and look forward to seeing you tomorrow. But until then, don't forget during COVID-19 to stay safe, stay sane, and never forget that God is in control. I'll see you tomorrow. Be blessed.